Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited to dive in today. And before we get started, put a yes in the chat if you've had someone else get take credit for work that you've done. So if you've had someone else take credit for work that you've done, put a yes in the chat. Oh, wow. Okay. I see a lot of yeses. Me too. Put a yes in the chat if you think good results should speak for themselves. You're like, I did really well in this project. This should just be sufficient. Lots of yeses. And I'm loving the energy. This is so good. And finally, put a yes in the chat if you want to share something that you're proud of at work, but held back because you don't want to be seen as showing off or bragging. Definitely me. Yes. Okay. Practically all of us. This is why we're here today. I am guilty of all of these things. Hi, everyone. I am Shivani. I am the CEO and founder of Ascend. And as Rachel shared, we offer an online leadership program for women. And what inspired me to start Ascend was I used to be in your shoes. So I owned and led different business and product initiatives at large companies such as PayPal and high growth startups. And as I was moving up into product leadership, I learned how to get buy-in and motivate my team and really influence by honestly, through a lot of mistakes some guidance, but primarily a lot of mistakes. And once I developed these skills, I felt so much more confident. I was able to move up faster in my career and impact not only my teams, but also executives and our company's board of directors. These experiences combined with the time I spent studying at Harvard Business School to get my MBA inspired me to create Ascend. I want to elevate more women to leadership. I think this is a big way that we drive the change in the workplace that we want to see. And I realized that right now we learn critical skills to lead and influence primarily through trial and error. We all know that we should get people invested in our ideas, that we should be better at saying no and speaking up and advocating for ourselves. But we often don't for three big reasons. One, we don't carve out the time to learn these skills. Two, we don't even know how to get started. Or three, we're scared. Practicing these skills at work is high stakes. If you make a mistake, it can hurt your reputation or even worse. That's why I started Ascend's Leadership Program, a six week online program where you can learn with women who are going through similar challenges as you to learn the skills to get buy-in and lead at work. Having a space, safe space to push yourself out of your comfort zone and developing these skills in a way that actually creates lasting habits to help you move up faster in your career and gain confidence. And we're doing it. For example, Diana from SAP joined Ascend's leadership program right when she came off maternity leave. And she was able to use the techniques that she learned the program and the tools to get buy-in at in her, all of her meetings and perform much better, which resulted in her getting promoted. So, you know, you're here today because you wanna invest in yourself, because you wanna learn how to advocate for yourself. And really to fully do that, you need to know the Ascend method, which covers all these topics. These are the areas that you have to be really successful in in order to move up faster in your career, in order to, to succeed. For example, overcoming imposter syndrome is a big topic in our leadership program. Katrina had just gotten promoted to entering manager at GitHub when she joined Ascend's program. She was feeling like an imposter. She was the only woman on her team and the youngest. And she was able to use the program strategies to realize that she is qualified to lead her team and feel more confident. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to advocate for yourself and the other topics we dive deep into the leadership program. And I'll share more about that towards the end. So the sixth hour is about you. Literally, it's in the title, advocate for yourself. So let's, I'm so excited for today's conversation. Let's keep this really interactive. If you have questions, drop it into the Q&A button. So it's at the bottom right of, of the screen. You can add questions there and upvote them and we'll do q and at the end. Now, as we get started, I wanna first cover some prerequisites to advocate for yourself. These are things that you have to have in place in order for you to be really successful at moving up. First, having around mindset, having a confident mindset. So maybe for you, you have self-doubts or you can think of a million reasons why you're not deserving or why you should not ask for something. In order for you to advocate for yourself, you need to have a confident mindset, be able to overcome that imposter syndrome. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then why should anyone else? Two, you need to perform. 
You need to be great at what you do. This doesn't mean that you can't make mistakes, but it does mean that you need to excel. And three, you need to own your own career development. Even the best manager will not be as good of an advocate for you as you are for yourself. You need to figure out where do I wanna go in my career? What kind of experiences or skills do I need? And what can I do to get myself there? Do I need to get some training? Do I need to work on certain projects to make sure I can achieve my goals? So once you've established these three prerequisites, we're gonna now talk about the three actions to advocate for yourself. So first is showcasing your value without bragging. And we saw a lot of yeses that we hold ourselves back because we don't wanna come across as we're showing off. So we're gonna talk about how can you do this in a way that doesn't come across like that. Two is asking for what you want. And three is leveraging relationships. So for each of these, we're gonna go through specific actions that you can start taking today in order to put these actions into place. So first, showcasing your value without bragging. Majority of the conversations happen in rooms when we're not present. Conversations about whether or not we should get promoted, how we're performing, how our product is doing. Given this, you need to be able to create a narrative for people so then when they're having these conversations without you present, they're able to understand your value and talk about it. And the thing is, good results aren't enough. You have to be able to connect the dots. So how do you do that? First, you need to create impact. How are you helping your company achieve its goals? How are you helping the team solve its problems? And then you need to showcase how you're actually doing that. Even if you're doing it, you need to paint the picture and I'll explain like how you can do that. Before I share that with you, I wanna just reframe our mindset. You're not showing off when you share something that, you're, that you or your team has accomplished. You're actually just raising awareness your manager needs to know how our project is, uh, is tracking in order for them to know, are we on track to meet, achieve our goals? In order for them to know, what are you capable of? So are you, how can they best put you in the organization to help drive the biggest impact? And often without you communicating it, they have no way of knowing, especially in this virtual world that we're living in today. So reframe our mindset that you're not showing off, you're merely just raising awareness on things that they need to know. And before I go into how you can do this, raise this awareness, I just want to call one thing. Often when I do this workshop, many of the women I work with, their reaction is like, well, I'm just doing my job. So I don't really know if I should raise awareness about this. And the thing is, you all work with smart people and ambitious people. And so I get that, that this can be an easy thing to think about. But in the absence of information, people often assume the worst. So even if you think you're just doing your job, you still need to highlight it. Because if you don't highlight it, people are not gonna be aware of what, how, the kind of impact you're driving. Even if something little, you still need to highlight it. So let's talk about how you can share close your value. So the first one is in one-on-ones and group meetings. So for example, you have regular one-on-ones with your manager and they're going and show them what's on your plate, what have you been working on and what's the impact you're driving? So always the so what. My team just resolved a bug in the feature and this will let, allow us to launch this product on time. I just conducted some customer research last week. Now we have some great insights to inform where we should invest our product roadmap for this upcoming year. Tying the so what makes it really clear to that person around why they should care about this and makes it really clear what's the impact you're driving. Put a yes in the chat if right now you're realizing you have a win that you need to go share with your manager. Let us know, just put a yes in the chat if that's you. Yes, okay. So for lots of us, great, make a note of that right now. And so you can go share that win with your manager in the, your next meeting. Then my personal favorite is email updates. So especially now when everyone's calendars are really busy, an email is a really great way to raise awareness around what you're doing, keep people informed without taking up time and they can read it at their own pace. So here's a template and we'll email you this template after today's workshop. So this template I use as a PM all the time and still continue to use now. So the first column is milestone, second column is a deadline, then your status, 
I really like using the traffic light colors because then it's really easy for someone just to skim through and see if a project is on track or not on track. And here, if one week something is off track and it's red, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's natural to have problems. It's actually your ability to solve these problems is what makes you stand out. So if one week something's red and the, after a couple of weeks it becomes yellow and then green, that's positive. And then if someone wants more information, they can go into the notes section. So I do this either in Google spreadsheets or docs or whatever tool you use at work. And then you can copy paste this template into your update email that you send out on a weekly basis or monthly basis, whatever that right cadence is for you and your team. And at the top of the email, I recommend just highlighting what are the key takeaways? Why should, like, what is the main thing you want people to understand from this email? And then if they want more information, they can scroll down and see this more detailed update template. And as a rule of thumb, make sure your key takeaways fit within the screen of your mobile phone because then that way people don't have to scroll down. And when you're sending these emails, err on sending people, more people that you would like to be involved. If people don't wanna read the email, they can always unsubscribe or just delete it from their inbox. But at least you are communicating the information to the people that you think you should be communicating to. Then the next one is around public forums. So for most of us, our companies are always looking for people to present at all hands, group meetings, maybe even your company blog. Go present there, share the work that your team has been doing. Maybe it's some research, maybe it's a new feature that just launched, share the results. Maybe you have some customer feedback to share. Maybe you just, your team just overcame a problem, share that. Cause most likely other teams are gonna be having that same problem. And now they're getting to understand one, how can they proactively solve this problem? And two, they're also getting to see all the great work that you're doing. And so next time when they think about a certain project area or a certain type of issue that's coming up or an opportunity, they'll have you in the back of their mind as someone who has dealt with this before. And you're also doing the company a favor by helping to show, showcase the impact to help other people grow and teams move forward to achieving their goals. Then this is my other favorite one, the elevator pitch. So when you go into a meeting, whether it's in person or virtual, you usually make small talk. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Well, instead of just saying good, use those precious 30 seconds to actually share what you're working on, especially if you're meeting with someone who you typically don't get FaceTime with, such as a senior leader. For example, saying like, oh, I'm doing good. We just like fixed this bug that allows us to launch on time. Or I'm doing great. We just did some customer research or we just prioritized our roadmap. And this is what we're planning on working on next year. And if that person wants to dive in deeper, they can. If they don't, then you just move on with and have the meeting that you had originally planned. But at least you're using that opportunity to showcase what you're working on and helping to create that narrative that you want people to think about you when opportunities come up. And then share feedback that you've received. Maybe it's a shout out they've gotten from a cross-functional partner or the, your engineering manager or a customer. Share that with your manager. Because when you look good, your manager looks good. And this feedback is also really important for them to know as you're thinking about where how, your promotion or where else can they put you as you take on larger scope in, within the company. So as you're doing this, it's important to prepare your rationale for why you're sharing this. And there's two big reasons. One, if you're not comfortable sharing your wins, then having this rationale will help you sanity check Am I rate sharing this because it's useful to people or am I just bragging? And the thing is, if you're even participating in this workshop and if you raise your hand for that you've held back and sharing things because you're worried about showing off is I can pretty much guarantee you that you're so far away from bragging that you could push yourself and start sharing more and always tie it back to the rationale of so what. The other reason why it's important to prepare a rationale for why are you showcasing this value? Why are you sharing this? is because unfortunately, there can be a bias that exists against women when we showcase our value. So in these moments, if you have a rational advance, you can stand up for yourself better. For example, one of Ascend's program members, Lizzie, she is a sales manager and she, last quarter, her team exceeded quota. So they did really well. At the sales all hands, she gave her team a shout out. 
afterwards, another sales manager for another team pinged her and said like, why did you share that? Um, gave your team a shout out that, you know, my team didn't hit quota and that's going to make them feel really bad that they didn't, but others did. And in that moment, Lizzie was like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. But then when we were chatting, she realized like, wait, I actually did what I did was fine because one, everyone is mature enough that we can celebrate people's successes, even if our own, if we didn't succeed. And two, we have celebrated teams wins, even though not all the teams exceed a quota. And most importantly, she realized that if she had just thought about this rationale, why she was sharing this in advance, then when someone had pushed back on her, she would have been able to stand up for herself. In Ascend, in the leadership program, we talk a lot around preparation and how can you do it to make sure that when you do get pushed back, either in this situation or when you're trying to get buy-in on an idea, how do you handle yourself and how do you overcome people's pushback or concerns? But for now, start with this. Always prepare a rationale for when you're showcasing results that you've helped to drive around why are you sharing this? Before we jump into the next step, section, I wanna talk about what are the kind of projects you should work on? What does it mean to work on a high impact project? So first, a high impact project is something that's aligned with your team or company goals. For example, it's something that is in your company OKRs. It's helping to achieve key company problems or move the needle on revenue targets, for example, or an area the company wants to invest in. The nice thing about this is when you are working on a high impact project, then senior leaders are going to be naturally just interested in what you're working on because they want to make sure that the company's goals are getting hit. And that's a really nice way for them to see all the good work that you're working on and build a relationship with you. Then you need to make sure the project has a clear measure of success. What is that metric that you're aiming for? How are you moving the needle? This way, when the project is finished and you've met the company goal or the project goal, it's really evident to everybody how you have been successful. And third, it needs to offer you growth opportunities. So for example, let's say you want to be more strategic. Well, how is this new project going to help you flex that muscle? Let's say you want to move into people management. How is this project going to help you move into people management? So thinking about these three things will help you make sure you're working on the right kind of projects and driving the impact that you want to, and that will help you accelerate your career. That being said, it is always important to always work on these um, keeping the lights on projects. It's just that you need to have a balance. If you're not working on a high impact project right now, then start having the conversation. So in the next six to 12 months, you can move into that kind of role because those are the roles that will help you really grow fast in your career. The second action is asking for what you want. We're not mind readers, so you have to be specific. For example, I am pretty much every single successful person I know have asked for every salary raise and promotion. And when I go and make the case to my manager, their reaction is like, oh yeah, you're right, let's go make it happen. The fact that they didn't bring it up to me first, it was not because they're being malicious, it's just that everyone's busy. They're trying to grow in their own careers. They have so many things on their plate. And so that's why you have to be responsible for advocating for yourself and asking for what you want. Especially because in the absence of you not asking, people assume, often assume you don't want it. And I know for us that can be frustrating because like, well, of course I wanna get promoted. Of course I wanna work on this really impactful area. It's that if you don't ask, people don't think about it. So you have to be really vocal. And to help you be really vocal around it, you should offer a really compelling business case. Similar to how we make a decision around what product area to invest in, which software to use, who to hire, these are all business-based decisions. And your ask is also a business-based decision. So there's three parts to this. The first is you need to have a really clear ask. So just saying, I wanna work on a high impact project is not specific. Talk about what exactly that means. And when you go into these conversations, make sure you do a lot of research up front so you make it really easy for that person to say yes. So you understand who needs to be involved, what are, what are the steps to make this happen. And remember, it's not a negotiation against, for example, your manager. It's actually a conversation. You're both on the same side. But yeah, you have to get them invested into your idea and help them understand why this is beneficial for them and the team and for you. So some examples of having asked. Joining a meeting, speaking at an executive meeting. For example, when I was product lead, I was responsible for leading our core product and we were revamping that. And there was an executive offsite coming up. 
I was not invited because I was not senior enough to go to that. But I asked my manager or CPO if I could go. And I presented the case that since I was leading this core product, I had a lot of insights and it was important for me to be part of these discussions if questions came up and for me to understand how our executives want to take this product. I'm like, okay, let me think about it. He went and talked to the CEO, came back, was like, yes, you should come. I presented at the offsite. It went really well. And then a few weeks later, they came back and they asked me to present at our board meeting. And I really don't think if I had not raised my hand to go to the exec offsite, I don't think I would have gotten that opportunity to speak at the board meeting. Because now, one, they know that I'm interested in these kind of opportunities. And two, they know that I can handle these kind of opportunities. That's why it's so important to raise your hand and vocalize how you want to grow and ask for opportunities. Maybe for you, you want to take a specific professional development course and you want to get an expense or you want to ask for a promotion. Start having those conversations. So once you have a clear ask, then you need to focus on why you. Why are you the best person for this job? For example, maybe it's how have you worked on this project that you heard before? How, why do you have domain expertise? What experience do you bring to the table? And then how are you driving impact of the company? So how are you, by you taking on this new role, by you working in a certain area or getting something or taking a professional development course, maybe it's you're like, I'm going to come back and share these learnings with my team. Having these skills will help me be successful. This, will, this is how it's going to help us achieve our revenue targets or achieve our goals for the quarter, for the year. So to help you do this, we're going to um, also send you this template. So this is a worksheet that you can use to customize it to something that you want to ask for. In a sense leadership program, we do a lot of these worksheets and tools around how do you storytell and what are the actual steps you should follow and then you can just customize it. So a lot of our members use these worksheets even months after they complete the program. And this is a sneak peek into a worksheet that you can start using today around how to advocate for yourself. And as a reminder, if you have questions, drop it into the Q&A button that's at the bottom right of your screen and you can upvote any questions there that are interesting to you. So let me share some examples of what a business case looks like. So this is actually a real example from uh, Maggie. She's a PM at Wayfair. And during the program, she wanted to talk at an executive meeting around a project that she was leading. So when she was thinking about the why me, she's like, well, I'm the project lead and I have detailed context around the discussion topic. And what's the impact of the company? Well, I can answer questions that my manager may not be familiar with. And that actually makes the manager happy because they don't want to be in an executive meeting, not be able to answer some of the questions that their senior stakeholders are asking. And it also allows me to understand executive concerns. Another example, well, I want to work on a certain project. Why me? Well, I've dealt with similar problems in my last project. Also, this is a growth opportunity for you, for me. It's okay if sometimes you're asking for things that will benefit you. That's normal. We all need to look out for our own careers. It's just that majority of the time you want to focus on things that are helping push the company forward. What's the impact of the company? Well, because of my past experiences, I can help the team navigate these challenges to drive a successful outcome. So usually right now I get the question, when is the right time to advocate for myself? And the short answer is always. Maybe for you, you're just dropping in performance reviews. Start having the conversations around where you want your career to go in the next six to 12 months and what's required to go do that. It's never too early to start having those conversations. And this is also for you if you hesitate asking for things because you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If you're an office fan, this is especially for you. And this is something that I really live by. So put a yes in the chat is if you have held back from asking for something because you don't want to get a no, you don't want to get rejected. Put a yes in the chat if that's you. You've held back from asking for something because you didn't want to get a no. Yeah, okay, so many of us. This is great. Like, this is why we're talking about this because it's important to remember, wow, lots of us. Okay, perfect. So this is something to think, to think about. It's really important to get comfortable with the no. No is better than a flaky yes. A no actually helps you open up the conversation to understand how to move things forward. A no will result in like, okay, then you can ask what's required for us to get to a yes. What are the next steps? And you can create a plan and act upon that plan. A flaky yes just puts you in circles. You're getting nowhere. 
It's also important to realize that getting no is normal. If you're always getting a yes, then you're not pushing yourself. Every successful person has failures. Every successful person gets no's. That's just normal life, especially when you work with really ambitious people. So if you take nothing away from today, it's just realize this, that getting no is really normal and it's important for us to get comfortable with no. So third action is around leveraging relationships. In today's work environment, it is not enough for us to advocate on our own. We need other people to also push for us, especially because remember, most of the conversations that happen about you and your performance happen in rooms that you're not present in, now virtual rooms. So you need to make sure there's people in those rooms who want you to succeed and who are pulling you up. So how can you do that? Well, first, it's really important to develop the skills to influence, especially as a PM, you have informal leadership. You are only gonna be as successful as being able to get alignment from the designers, engineering managers, engineers, data analysts, and all the other people that you're working with. And the only way you can do that is to get them invested in your ideas, to build relationships with them. That's why I started Ascend, because I realized how important it was to influence. And I had many blowups because I wasn't able to really focus on getting people invested in my ideas and work together. And so in the leadership program, we talk about how do you story tell? How do you get people invested in your ideas? How do you build those relationships? What do you do when people are pushing back? Because the secret is, once you know these skills, not only will you be more successful, but you will also feel more confident. For example, Kendall from Box, week three of the program, she got dropped into a last minute meeting since her manager couldn't attend. She had to, she became responsible then for getting alignment on a product recommendation that her team had. And she had to get, get alignment from a dominant personality and other stakeholders. And she was able to use the tools that she learned in the program and had already started developing habits around it that she was able to go in last minute and drive alignment around this. She came out of the meeting feeling much more successful than she ever had been. And more importantly, she felt empowered and really confident. That's why it's so important to learn these skills to influence is because it helps you be successful and helps you feel more confident and perform better. So once you have the skills to influence, then let's talk about sponsors and mentors. A sponsor is someone who will talk about you. A mentor is someone who will talk with you. A mentor can be someone at your company or outside your company. A mentor can also be your sponsor. And you could have multiple sponsors and multiple mentors. For example, a sponsor from myself has been my manager, cross-functional partners. So how, what does a great sponsor look like? First, they're a respective leader with influence. So they have the clout to pull you up. Then they love your work and they believe in you. This is why it's so important to work on high impact projects because if they are working with you, they naturally get to see all the great work you're doing and they're gonna advocate for you, especially because everybody wants to work with people who are good at their job. It makes their lives easier. It makes everyone be successful. And they're willing to actually endorse your work. They're willing to talk about you. So how do you find a sponsor? First, know who the good sponsors are. You can probably already think of people who really like your work or leaders who you know are really good about speaking up about for other people. Put a yes in the chat if you're realizing that you need to go find a sponsor at work. Just drop a yes if you need to go find a sponsor at work. Yeah, okay, many of us. Perfect, so this is for you and make notes to go do this. And when I say know who the good sponsors are, don't be limited by just people who are in the product organization or in the engineering organization, think more broadly. For example, one of our Ascend guest speakers, Belinda Runkle, she's a director of engineering at Google. And she shared with us that her sponsors not only included people in the engineering department, but also people in the sales department and the COO at her last company. So think more broadly as people who like your work and who enjoy working with you and are gonna be pulling you into these conversations. Then make your work visible to target sponsors. So again, by working with them, it becomes pretty easy. Sending these email updates and 
a lot of the other ideas I suggested, I recommended to you when we talked about how do you showcase your value. Then you wanna to get to know your target sponsor through working with them, through coffee chats. If you wanna schedule a coffee chat, one tip I have for you is, especially since everyone's calendars are really busy right now, book something three weeks out. Because usually three to four weeks out, people's calendars are fairly empty. And so they're more likely to say yes. And when they get to that point, they usually won't cancel. And when you grab this coffee, make sure you're making good use of their time. So come prepared with what you want to talk about and share things that they would be interested in and help build that rapport. Then ask for that sponsorship. Ask around what does mean, be, share with them, what does being a sponsor mean to you? What do you want for them? Maybe you want them to put a good word in the promotion cycle about you. Maybe you want to work on a project that they're leading. Be really specific and help and work with them to create a plan on how can you get there. And then finally, you need to make your sponsor look good. We do things for people that we like. And especially when someone else is putting their reputation on the line for you, it's important to work 110, 200% extra hard to make sure things go successful. Because that is the best way you can thank them. And then they're more likely to help you and, and advocate for you again in the future. Because you, it's not that they're doing a favor for you, they're actually helping themselves and the company move forward. And the last thing here is you need to create a fan club to grow your influence. Now, if you're shy or an introvert, you might be like thinking like, no, -uh, this is not me. I don't like to market myself. This sounds really salesy and flashy. The thing is, don't worry, it's not, it's completely organic. You create a fan club by doing good work, by building relationships with your team, by helping your team solve problems. For example, the next time that a coworker of yours is in a team meeting, they're trying to figure out a problem, then they'd be like, you know what, let's loop in Sarah. I know she's dealt with this before. Or new projects is kicking off. They're like, let's loop in Pooja. I know that um, she's interested in working in this kind of domain. So by creating this fan club, you, cr you have all these advocates for you who are speaking up in opportunities that you're not even aware of. That's why it's so important to understand how to influence and build these relationships around. So then that is how you get real leverage in your career. So in summary, these are the three prerequisites that you should be thinking about. And these are the actions that you should start taking today to really advocate for yourself. And in the end, we're all about action. So I'm gonna challenge you to a seven day challenge to advocate for yourself. So right now you're gonna create one goal around what you wanna achieve in the next seven days around any of the topics that we talked about today. Maybe for you, you're like, I'm feeling like an imposter and I'm gonna take steps to overcome imposter syndrome. I'm gonna invest in some kind of professional development course that's gonna help me develop the skills I want. I'm gonna start sending out weekly update emails. I'm gonna share that win with my manager that I realized that I haven't shared yet. I've been holding back. I'm gonna set up a coffee chat with a potential sponsor. I'm gonna actually ask to go speak in the next executive meeting or speak up at a, at a um, all hands. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. I'm gonna play you some music, so you have some background music and put one goal in the chat around any of these things, make it really actionable. So for example, just saying, I'm gonna showcase my value is not actionable. What does that actually mean? What are you gonna do in the next week? Maybe you're gonna go do a one-on-one -on -one with your manager and share a win. Maybe you are going to practice your elevator pitch, whatever that is, practice one thing and then put it in the chat. So one goal and write it into the chat. Revisit my unfulfilled promotion, that's great. Priya, I love the own your career development. It's just like being, can you break it down more? Like what's one action you can take around own your career development? I got an upcoming performance review. I'm gonna share at least 10 wins ahead of time. That's great. Get buy-in on the vision for the target area. I love that. Practice my elevator pitch at least two times. Love that. That's really actionable. I love that. Ask 
to present in the next exec meeting and hear the impact. That's perfect. Ask for a resource for the next big project. That's really great. And as you're writing this, put it, put your goal to somewhere where you can easily refer back to it. So maybe for me, I like doing calendar invites. Maybe for you, it's a post-it on your laptop or in your notebook, wherever that is, put that somewhere where you can remember it. This is all really good. Develop good speech techniques to make an impact. Ask your manager to make time for one-on-one. Yes, that's so important. It's not unreasonable for you to ask for a one-on-one for your, your manager. And so ask them and explain how that's helpful to you and, and to them. Practice my elevator pitch with one of my friends. That's perfect. 30 more seconds. Finish up your goal. Don't overthink it. Drop one goal that you're going to have around it. seconds and then so just throw it in the chat don't overthink it throw your last one finish editing me meeting the article and post it this week that's great speak up and contribute to the workshop i'm taking this saturday love that that's really actionable perfect so in ascend we're all about action and accountability so if you want to hold yourself accountable to achieve the goal that you just shared right now, these are, love these goals. These are great goals. Then I highly recommend that you gather a couple friends together, ideally from different companies. So you get a diverse set of perspectives and also you are able to share in a safe space. So they're not just, um, you know, sometimes it gets awkward sharing things about work with colleagues. In a sense leadership program, we handpick every member and curate small groups that are high caliber yet diverse, have shared goals, but, and everyone has low egos. And our members love it. So if you wanna do this on your own and hold yourself accountable, that's awesome. If you want someone just to do it for you and you want these curated groups and a safe space to really push out of your comfort zone and develop the habits to get buy-in and influence, then I'd love to work with you in a science leadership program. It's a six week online program where you'll develop the skills and actionable frameworks to be able to motivate your teams, get buy-in, overcome imposter syndrome, push back against dominant personalities, which I and many of our members have had to deal with and really grow in your career. So the women coming out of the program gain confidence, are able to develop the skills to get buy-in and lead and really accelerating and moving up in their careers. And what makes the program unique is three key things. The first is a focus on actionable learnings. This means that everything we will do in the program will have a clear step-by-step -step playbook of what to do, including how do you handle situations that don't go well, as they often do. Every week, how the program works is every week you'll have video lessons so you'll watch at your own pace. Then we'll come together for two live sessions. The first session is on Tuesday morning, specific time. And this is our group discussion. So you'll review case studies. We'll go into breakout discussions with one or two other people where you'll discuss the learnings, discuss challenges, and then we'll do Q&A as a cohort. And then our second session is on Thursdays, either mornings or evenings Pacific time. And we have women from all over the world joining in this. And that is our circles. So that is an intimate discussion around the module topics with a curated small group of your peers. Often our members love the people in their group so much, and they love circles so much that they often choose to continue meeting with our groups even after the program ends. And then after the live sessions, you'll have exercises that you'll apply directly to your work because we learn the best by doing. The second thing that makes the program really unique is community. So you're gonna be in a safe space with women like you. And we're also gonna talk about biases that you might face as a woman leader or being the only woman in the room. For our members, it's been really powerful to realize I'm not alone. A bunch of smart, qualified women face the same challenges as I do. And we can work together to figure out how to overcome these challenges and grow in our careers. And you're gonna be part of the community even after the program ends. Then you join our alumni community where we do events and you, we can keep in touch via Slack where you can continue to share wins and ask questions to get support. The third thing that makes the program really unique is accountability. For most of us, we have the best of intentions when we, develop, when we want to develop a new habit, but then day to day just gets in the way. And so we've designed the program to help make sure you do achieve your goals. 
through having the accountability buddies, the exercises. In fact, you get a bonus accountability session after you finish the program. So a few weeks after you finish the program, you had more time to implement the learning. We come back together, check in on your progress and answer any new questions that you might have. So today I've shared many of the stories that our members um, have had coming out of the program, how they've grown. And that's really common for participants in the program around growing faster, moving up, getting promoted, being able to get buy-in from difficult stakeholders, motivating their teams, gaining more confidence. And we've had women from these companies and many more join. If this is really resonating with you, you're like, I want to double down and really develop these skills, then I'd love to work with you in our program starting, starting on March 1st. You're going to be joining a bunch of women. I love how the cohort is shaping up. It's women from companies like Google and Amazon and Salesforce and Slack and DoorDash and Peloton and many more companies, including many PMs. So our program's almost full. If you're interested in joining, I'll drop my email into the chat. And you can, I've dropped my email to chat. You can message me. The tuition is $1,995, but as a thank you for joining today, you get a $150 discount off. So just email me if you want next steps to um, join the program. I can also send you a letter if you want to try to expense this to your company. We have people use professional development budget. Also, we have a lot of people who pay for the program out of pocket because they just view this as an investment in themselves. And so if you're interested um, and you're like, I want to double down on advocating for myself, I want to really learn these skills to lead and influence and spend a few weeks just thinking deeply around how to build habits around these critical skills and be able to learn and connect with a bunch of other awesome women who have the similar goals as me. I'd love to come work together with you. I've loved the energy in today's session. Thank you so much for that. And so just email me if you're interested. And um, with that, let's dive into Q&A. So if you have questions, put it in the Q&A that's at the bottom of your screen and you can upload any questions you might have. All right, so the first question is, how do you find a good sponsor if you are just entering the company? That's a really great question. I know, especially because I think right now, a lot of people are moving around. So there it's, you know, first focus on building the relationships and driving good results. Because once you do those things, the sponsors will start naturally coming up. It's not, it's really hard, almost impossible to ask someone to sponsor you if they don't actually, if you don't have credibility with them. So first focus on building those relationships, understanding how the organization works and driving results, even some initial results to build that, start building that sponsor relationship. What are practical ways that we can build relationships in virtual teams with everyone being remote? Yeah, that's a challenge that I, that's a question I get often. So here the thing is that Ways that you can build the relationships in this virtual is one is pinging people separately and doing coffee chats. And you know, people, everyone's craving communic is being together, building these relationships. You're not the only one who's facing this problem. So people will probably appreciate if you just message them, you're like, hey, I'd love to catch up. We haven't caught up in a while. Um, I know we're working on similar things or would love to understand what are the challenges you're facing in case there's a way to help. Like, do you mind if we grab like a 15, 20 minute chat? And if they're really busy, they'll tell you, but otherwise the, most likely they're gonna be happy to chat with them. It's also around thinking about, you know, when you are in meetings, how can you build relationships? So in one-on-ones, for example, instead of diving straight into work, spend a couple minutes up front getting to know that person, how they're doing, what are their challenges? And then once you know what people are working on, if you see an interesting article or a resource that could help them, send it to them. People will appreciate that proactiveness. So those are a couple ways you can build it to foster that. Um, something else that you could try, especially as if you're a leader of your team or work with a lot of different people is even setting up office hours. So maybe one hour a week, you're like, here's like the Zoom link to this. Um, I'm just gonna be here. If you wanna drop in for any conversation, just to chat, ask them any questions, like come in and we can have an informal conversation. Because usually for people to schedule a meeting, it's just a big, there's a big friction around it. And so if you can lower that friction, just be like, hey, I'm gonna be here. If you're interested, just come, let's do that. Um, that can be a really nice way. Another thing, if it's safe for you to go outside, doing virtual walks. So getting outside of your office, same way how you might've been doing when we were in office, you would do one-on-one -on -one walks. Do that virtually where you both are just being on your phones as you're walking around. I cut off for one. How do you redeem the $150 offer? Um, you can just email me. So my email's in the chat and um, I can send you information to um, how to join the program. 
how can you advocate for yourself for career progression and raise if you're going on maternity leave and your manager doesn't know yet? Um, that's a great question. There, it's I would follow the same steps. You know, if you are, you know, point out why you are qualified for the um, for the raise. Um, what are the results that you've driven? What's the market data that show that supports this raise? And have the conversations. And, and before even before you go approach your manager, ask understand the processes within your company. So when are raises decided? When do you need to, what are the HR policies around it? So inform yourself with as much information as possible when you go in to have this conversation. And if you have more questions, keep throwing them into the chat. Um, they can be around anything around showcasing your value, imposter syndrome, being able to, how do you ask for, you know, like ask for your making a business case around it. How do you build sponsorship? How do you drive that influence? Like throw those questions into the Q&A button. So I saw some, there's a bunch of questions around promotion. So I just shared some tips around that. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. And really it's just like, you know, if you're feeling awkward about asking for a promotion or a raise, use the strategies we talked about today. So building a business case. And use that for promotion because when you do that, when you think about why, what are you asking for, why you, what's the impact of the company, that will help you gain more confidence and you'll have a stronger case when you go to your manager. And then you want to get your manager invested in like, yes, she deserves a promotion or she deserves a raise. And so, because they're ultimately the ones who are advocating for you in the rooms when these conversations are actually happening. I then I, um, okay, I see some questions in the chat. Let me just check those out. So I see a question around, can you talk a bit more about how to push for a promotion when your manager says that you're doing everything right, but it's simply just time in the role? That's a good one. I know it can be really frustrating when your manager is saying that they, um, you know, that you keep having a conversation, they're like, oh, not right now, now is not the right time. So here I would say, if you're getting pushback, then I think it's important for you to really sit down with your manager and really lay out what exactly needs to happen in order, in order for you to get that promotion. So for example, if they're saying just time in the role, break it down, like, what does that mean? Are there certain results you have to drive? Are there certain types of experience that you need to have? And if that's true, then create a plan for how can you make sure you're having those right experiences? And then document it with clear timelines, put it in writing and email it to your manager and yourself so you both have it. And then make sure you follow up on a regular basis around it. So it's really like anytime you're getting pushback, whether it's asking for a promotion, whether it's getting more resources for your team, or you're trying to implement a project and people are saying no to you, you always want to understand like, why are you saying no? And what does it take to get a yes? And let's actually document that and put in a plan around like, how can we actually achieve that plan going forward? Um, Priya, so loved ask for what you want i usually end up hoping that other person will, person will guess it yeah that's so true that's why we're talking about it now because i know so many of us will just hope the other person will guess that we think it should be obvious but it's actually not and so your question is how far do you go and asking a sponsor for what you want also do you explicitly ask someone to be your sponsor or the difference between mentor and sponsor situational so these are both really great questions so first let me talk about first how far uh, do you explicitly ask for someone to be a sponsor yes i think you can and so, you know, ask someone to be a sponsor once they, you've actually established credibility with them. Uh, once you know they have good reason to be able to sponsor you. So for example, they know enough about you to put your name in the hat. Because remember when they are your sponsor, they're also putting their reputation on the line. So if you do good work, if you build a good relationship, they understand why you're asking for this, like you should definitely ask for the sponsorship. And I would say same way as a mentor or sponsor. And I think both of them also happen organically. So it can be a mix and just feel out the situation. And then, then this brings me to your second question is how far out do you go and asking a sponsor for what you want? I would say be really explicit. And again, it's not that like you're coming in day one, you're like, I want this, I wanna work on this like project, let's talk about promotion. It's like, you're delivering good results. And you're saying like, you know, I really, for example, if you wanna talk about promotion, even if you're talking about it when you like initially came on the company, it's talking about like, you know, I wanna just understand like what's required for me to get there. I wanna make sure I'm driving the biggest impact to the company as I possibly can. And what does that mean? Can we discuss that? And then doc, spell that out and document it. And then to, you know, for example, if you're asking your sponsor about working on a certain project or getting invited to a meeting, then be really explicit and always tie it back to the business case. So why you and what's the impact of the company? 
and have room for conversation. Be prepared that you might get a no and that's completely normal and just remember that and understand, well, what can I do next time to help make sure that um, we are able to get to that yes. Um, how do you, let's see, let me read. So how do you work around biases? Um, let's talk, so, you know, in the, in the leadership program, we talk a lot about dominant personalities. And I think that's something that I've had to deal with many times and many of our members. And so a couple of the things that you think about when you're having this situation is around one, winning their respect. So establishing your credibility, um, really earn really early, understand like, why are they pushing back? So just looking to get more information coming from a place of curiosity. Then um, leveraging allies can be really powerful. So having other people who are advocating for you to build social proof. And then the third thing I'd say is give feedback. And I know it's not always a possible win in every single situation. And it's not always gonna be a great outcome. And that it's definitely a tough situation when that's happening. Uh, and, but I will say like, sometimes people don't realize what they're doing. They don't realize they're being difficult to deal with, for example. So give feedback on how their actions are making you feel and explain why you're giving them this feedback. And the program, we talk a lot about giving feedback and it's really focused on like first, like your intent and disarming them so they don't feel like they're getting defensive. You're like, you know, I just wanna share with you how this is making me feel because I don't know, or like the impact, this is the pattern I'm noticing. I just wanna understand maybe from your perspective why this is happening. So I think we have time for one last question. Um, and so I see a question here, how do you ask for increasing responsibilities or increase in work scope? And okay, I think we can do, and so here it is. Um, so how do you ask for increasing responsibilities, increasing work scope? Well, there it's understanding, okay, like where does my team need to go? Where does my company, where does the company need to go? So what are the responsibilities that are outstanding? Then showing how are you exceeding at your current responsibilities? And how have you developed the skills to exceed in these ex increased responsibilities? That being said, that doesn't mean that like you need to excel at these new responsibilities. It's showing that like you have the ability to learn quickly, for example. Like for example, when I got promoted as people manager, I'd never been a people manager before, but that's normal. But I felt so much like an imposter when I got promoted. In fact, I felt so much like an imposter that I didn't even ask for a salary raise because I was afraid that if they had to pay me more money, they would rethink whether or not I deserve this promotion. A couple months later, I realized that this is actually not rational. I should ask for that raise. I was doing a bigger scope of responsibility and I deserved it. So when I did, I did get that raise. But I share that example with you just to highlight that you're not always gonna have the experience or the skills to move into this increased responsibility. So, but what's important is that you are excelling at what you're already doing and you have a path around, define around how will you be able to exceed in this new area. So part of it comes with time, part of it's you correctly taking the time to invest in skills or experiences or getting mentorship to help you develop the skills that you need to. And I would always also, when you ask for increasing responsibility, position it as a business case. So you're not asking it just for yourself as a growth opportunity. Maybe it is a growth opportunity, but it's also how are you helping your company or your team? So helping to take things off your manager's plate, I'm sure they would really value that and help highlight that. So um, I wanna, you know, thank you so much for today. I see, I see a bunch of questions. So I've shared my email in the chat. Feel free to reach out. I'd love to stay in touch. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I share a lot of advice there in our, in, and in our newsletter. And thank you so much for joining today. I hope you remember to practice your actionable goals. And so that seven day challenge, don't forget about that. Um, you invested the time to show up here today, which means so much to us. I love the group's energy. Thank you, everyone. Stay well and safe. Take care.